from our family and do my work for my staff as well. And you know, you give and you give, and I've enjoyed it. And uh, I'm still going to be doing giving to the community because that's what I do. Social worker by nature, and that's what I think I do best. And I'll just do it in a different feature. But I will be around. I'll even come and attend some council meetings from time to time. But I will be keeping you in mind. <laughs> <laughs>
score lots of goals so you can continue on. And all of the counselors that, that I've had the pleasure, the honor of presiding over for, for eight, eight elections have all done just that. Uh, you know, and I, I tried during the campaign to to try and center you up and take a little bit of your attention away from you so you can get, you know, the, 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 what you really deserved and the praise you deserved. It's, it's never been a one-man show. It's always been a team effort. And, uh, and that's pretty special. And I've got to tell you, from my travel across the country with other municipalities and talking to other people, there's not a lot of councils that do what we do and do it in, the, in the, the manner that we do, which is exactly how the people of Fredericton want it. You know, if, you have, if we have a problem, we deal with it. Doesn't, it doesn't pay. Should we do we shut down the block? Form. And uh, you know what? There's been so many of those you occasions. You do what you do, but what about the democratic system? And we've left it right here, where it belongs. And you fight your hardest on an issue, and you win, and sometimes you don't. But you know what? You leave it at the council uh, table, and you come back the next time and you start all over again. This city, without a doubt, is, is the most beautiful and wonderful city that I think in the entire world. I really do. Uh, the people here are so caring and compassionate. Um, our public works staff, as I said, it's so much easier to say after the election, but you know, they transitioned this city from a winter dull place into a beautiful garden. The, all the streets and all the, it's amazing when you drive over how beautiful it is. And a few nights this time of the year when I'm driving across the bridge and I'm looking up the river, I'm saying to myself, you know what, it doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are or where you live in this world, sit with me and look up that river right now and be amazed because it's just absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. Sam Mazzari said it best and I've quoted him so many times, living in Fredericton is like living in a garden. I wanted to end this way by saying I haven't returned my phone calls uh, and my messages. They're just too many, way too many. But I am, over the next few days, going to take the time to call people personally and thank them because the messages were, uh, were overwhelming, hard to read, happy to read. And uh, I was still going at it last night at pretty well 5 o'clock in the morning. Just trying to process everything and looking at these wonderful messages and and, uh, and hugging my daughter last night, you know, for the little ones. And Scott, you would know this, it's our family. My son in Montreal wrote the most beautiful, beautiful thing. And he talked about being the mayor's son, how difficult that is. And uh, it, it has been for my children. I don't think they've really been given the, deserve, the, the credit they deserve because People would always say, oh yeah, you got that, you got that, yeah. because you're the mayor's son, you're the mayor's son. Michael's a good kid. That, that's tough on kids. <laughs> Michael's a good family. They're talented, and they, they deserve to do it on their own, and they have done it on their own. Yeah, I agree. But anyway, my daughter said to me last night, she was hugging me just as we left the litter row, she said, Daddy, she said, this is almost like you died. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, I had the same kind of feeling. It's like all of these messages, oh, I'm so sorry, and it's like, oh my word. Uh, you know what? The people of this great city are never wrong. And they were not wrong this time. As a matter of fact, they know me a little better than I know myself, and they knew that the time was up. And I, in my heart, knew the time was up. And I tried to put on my best face last night with, with, a, with a tweet by saying, I'm not really re thinking about the one I lost, I'm thinking about the 10 that I won. And, uh, and the wonderful support that I had from this great community. And to think, dropping out of school in grade nine and being a doctor, that's, that's a highlight. And people in Devon don't even believe it. But God bless this city and God bless our staff and all those that want to serve to try and make it better. I need a motion to get out of here. It's going to be Keenan and Brandy. All those in favor, those opposed, Motion is carried. Take your stuff with you.
I said that, you know, piss off too many people and too many different issues. So far as uh, um, um, I feel real good, I'm not thinking about the election loss as much as I'm thinking about uh, the contribution I've made to make our community a better place. I'm proud of that, and uh, so I, had, I leave tonight with a good feeling. I think the people of Fredericton uh, made the made the right call. I think it was time. It was time for them, and, and quite frankly, I think it's time for me. Everything that I've ever done for this city has felt amazing. And, uh, yeah, that was a little bit tough. I mean, I, I tried not to be emotional, and I didn't want to be emotional, but with Jennifer and my wife and, uh, and my members of council, and Chris, I actually started to pass by my 30-year thing. I thought, no, that's not necessary. Anyway, I, that was tough. That was tough. They're just beautiful people, and I just had a great time. Yeah. When you were saying your goodbyes tonight, you referred to the fact that the people of Fredericton realized it was time, and yep. in your heart you knew it was time as well. Yep. yep. Can you explain what you meant by that? Well, I think it's pretty well self-explanatory. Uh, you know, when you've been around uh, as long as I have, and people start to talk about change, um, they got it right. I mean, the people of Fredericton got it right. It, it was time. And I felt that in my heart as well. I felt that before going into the election. I talked to Anne about it, and uh, I'm very pleased with the outcome. So the only way to get away from this place is to have people vote you out. And they did that, and I thank them for that, because I'm going to have a bit of a break and a bit of a rest and still enjoy, and uh, I'll do the same thing as Marilyn. I, some of the volunteer organizations, and please, don't, I don't want anybody calling right yet, but I, uh, I'll probably get involved in that way and stay active uh, that way and, and help other people. Speaking of calling, have you had any job offers come in in the last uh, 48 hours? Yes, I have. Peter yeah. Pacey called. Other and, than Peter uh, Pacey? Other than Peter Pacey? Yeah. Well, that's a job <laughs> offer. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I uh, What I said in my last thing, I haven't really been able to answer my phone and respond to... Uh, uh, respond to the social media. I want to do that. I just couldn't do it uh, in the time that's been allotted. And it was after five when I got to bed last night. So I was pretty wiped today. But uh, there could be some job offers there. Right? But they're all phone messages. And Anne was listening to a few of them. And I said, no, I, I can't respond to those right now. They're very dear friends. And they're from all over Canada. I mean, it's just all over the all over the country. So it's going to be a, going to be a task just responding to them. But I will personally, each and every one of them. They're just made me feel good. Any, choice we, any chance we will catch you with the Calvin Ginsburg? 
you know what? If, if, if they want me to do a guest thing or somebody uh, wants me to do a guest song, I mean, that's the way I've always been and I'll always continue to do that. I'll jump from a crowd anytime and, and act or sing or... Yeah, that's, that's, that's who I am. I'm a wild and crazy guy. Will you yeah. accept an appointment to, to, to the Senate? You know, that would be nice, Charles, but I disagree with the Senate. I don't like the Senate, and I think it should be changed, and it should be elected and accountable. Would you run? And, uh, well, I, you know, I, I certainly would have. I said that quite some time ago. I don't want to be associated with a political party. I want to be an independent thinker, but if, uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, but I don't, th don't see that happening as well, because I think I've been too outspoken against uh, liberals and conservatives and, and prime ministers and governments. So that's probably, that would never happen. Do you think you'll ever run for office again? I will definitely never run for office again. If I would have won, I would have announced it, but I don't think people believe me. <laughs> so I told the guy with the signs, he said, yeah, I've heard that before. He said, I'm telling you, burn the signs. I don't want them. And uh, no, this, this, this would have been it. So what, what's different this time? Well, I'm older. I'm starting to feel it. You know, I mean, what's different this time in terms of what? Well, you did say last time about four years ago that you weren't going to run again. So what changed? Well, I mean, if you go back, and I'm a stickler on this, I said in all probability. That's number one. And number two, don't ask people this the night of an election when you're worn out and tired, and the last thing you want to think about is another election. So give people a little bit of time uh, uh, and let them process all of this and then you get a better answer but not the night of the election four years ago when I when I was feeling I <laughs> I get to get out of this so you, no I do you feel any relief I feel relief I feel a lot of weight off my shoulder I mean uh, being the mayor of the city t takes with it a tremendous responsibility I mean I've got to be careful what I do what I say uh, but no I, I feel liberated right now I feel the freedom and uh, the only way I could ever get that feeling is to get out of City Hall, and so if, I think the people were right. If you're a MLA, you collect your pay for six months, how does it run from there? I got if my you, pin tonight. Lose. We're not like other levels of government. When you leave, you get a watch or a pin. You don't, uh, no. no salary for three months, uh, for no. four months after, no? No, no, I won't even have my key to get into this place. No, this is uh, this is the the government closest to the to the people, and uh, no, we don't take stuff like that. I, I think in Moncton, even if you get defeated, they, the candidates get something. We don't do that here. Nothing. No, nothing. No service package. Nothing. Nothing. Well, uh, let me check on that, Charles. I haven't I haven't heard of anything, but it'd be nice. When are you going to move out of your office? Have you given that any thought? Are you going to move out before the new council sworn in? Oh yes, oh yes, yes, and I'll come back and I'll do it in the evening because it's it's just too tough a thing to do with the friends that I have. So I'll duck in in the darkness of night, and maybe Chris will be over and give me a hand, and uh, we'll pack the boxes and move out. Try and I don't want to cause any, you know. I just want it to be a nice, smooth transition, which I think it will be. I think Mike's going to be an incredible mayor. He's going to do a great job. Uh, he's probably also going to find out it's a little tougher than uh, than than you think. Uh, with, the, with the issues you have to deal with, but uh, he's going to do a fine job, and, and, and he's got enough great people in council that uh, the continuity will be there, and that's important for the people in Fredericton. How about a talk show on, on, on the radio in the old days? I'd love to do one. Why do you start when you told Terry Sagan tonight? Uh, <laughs> you know, that's, uh, that's not even a fair fight. I love you, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And thanks to the media guys. It was spectacular. Steve and you and I have been such great friends. And you, know what, you know what you've never done? He's never, ever went over that line of the friendship and the job that he does. Never did that. Never would never talk to me, even on board a ship, he would never talk to me about things that he shouldn't talk about. And that's, that's a quality that my friend, which is very, very special with a media person, you always knew when to say, that's the line, and he never crossed it. And even if I asked him something, he would, I, couldn't, I couldn't even trick you. <laughs> so I really appreciate that, Stephen. And Lauren, oh, I grew up with Lauren. I was so mean to her at the last meeting. I got home, and she and was so mad at me, and I said, I just, I, I just blew a gasket. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, is it this little Lauren? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did somebody want to talk to me? Nick. 
Or no? Okay. Or you okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I recorded your speech. Okay. Good. What? I recorded your speech. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, that's great. As much as we don't want to No, I don't want to. Okay. No, no, no. Because mine is actually. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> no, I'll let you off the hook this time. Okay. Oh, good. Good.